Welcome, Van Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran A.K. The Laird here and I have a lovely hardware review for you this week. And as you can see, that is this absolute beast, the Amstrad CPC 464 with a green screen monitor no less. Can't get better than that, eh? And uh, this is actually the first time I've had it on and used it. Um, when I bought it, the person was insistent that it worked and even offered to show me it working um, when I picked it up. But... Um, I said, no, that's fine. I took it home and it's been sitting in my garage um, because I just, I've just i been so busy over the, the summer holidays. I haven't had time to do anything with it. But here it is. I mean, I spoke in one of my other videos. I think it was the, the Philips Video Pack one I did about having picked up quite a few uh, good things on Marketplace this summer. I had a great um, summer for Marketplace pickups. And uh, this was possibly the best of the lot because I got this... Um, CPC 464 with the green screen monitor and a big box of games I think there was about 50 odd in there and I got that for £50 from someone two streets away from me so can't get better than that because we bugger all in uh, travel to go around there and uh, yeah it's, it's all very nice the only, my only complaint was that it was absolutely and utterly filthy because they said it had been in their loft and um, it really was disgustingly dirty and dusty. So t I, I spent ages trying to clean it up before doing this video. And I'm still not particularly happy with um, with how clean it is. But I think I, what I really need to do is, is actually take the computer apart to give it a proper clean. Because um, there seems to be dust and grime in every orifice. So I was actually quite surprised <laughs> when I plugged it in and it did work first time. But I guess these are sturdy old things that uh, Sir Alan built back in the day. So just to give you a bit of um, history, uh, not on the CPC itself, I'll do that in a moment, but actually on my own um, history with the, with the computer itself. I was a Spectrum owner back in the day, as many people know from my other videos, but one of my best friends, Nick, uh, so shout out to, to Nick Woodman. I'm still friends with him to this day. Um, he lives very close to me as well. Uh, he had this exact model. He had an Amstrad, he had a Amstrad CPC 464 with the GT65 green screen monitor. Um, and he had hardly any games because uh, his parents didn't really like him buying games. But he had the stuff that came with it. And I also used to go around, do you remember the you used to get Mastertronic games that were flippy, they were called, where they had the Amstrad version on one side and a Spectrum version on the other. And I had quite a few of those. So I would take those round to his house so we could play the Amstrad versions of the games. But yeah, his parents didn't really like him playing games in it. They thought it was uh, a, a serious computer for using for schoolwork and stuff. Um, even though, you know, obviously we use BBCs at school. But there we go. Um, but yeah, I used to, used to have some fun with it. And funnily enough, one of the games that we used to enjoy the most, because we used to try and like tricking it, uh, it sounds stupid, was Animal Vegetable Mineral and Soft Classic there. Um, educational game. But we used to play that loads because we used to put in really stupid things, quite often rude things, um, to try and make the computer guess what they are because basically the whole premise of it is that it tries to guess what's an animal, vegetable, mineral and what it is. So, yeah, we used to play around with it all the time. It was um, good fun. And you'll see that with this this um, pickup, I did actually get all the Amsoft games um, with it, all the original packings. So I've got um, Zypho's favourite there, um, Bridget, which I know he absolutely loves, and he was he was recommending this to me. And when he saw what I picked up, he said, um, "You know, you've got literally the best game on the CPC already in, in, in Bridget." Um, and so, shout out to Zypho. And uh, yeah, if if you're into the Amstrad CPC and you're really watching this, or you want to know a lot more about the Amstrad CPC, then I'll give a quick plug to Zypho's channel because it's absolutely brilliant. If you like the CPC or into the CPC or want to find out more about the CPC. There's really only two channels that you need to watch on YouTube, um, apart from mine, obviously, are Zypho's channel. I'll, I'll put a link to that actually down in the description. And also Novabug, a good friend of mine, Chris, aka Novabug, goes to all the events. Great guy. He does some quality Amstrad CPC stuff on his channel. And uh, he actually reviewed my Amstrad CPC book that I did recently as well, which was very nice of him. Just notice you can see me probably quite clearly in the screen there as well. Waved, it might pick it up, it might not. But 
let's get into the business. So a little bit of history with the CPC. Um, it was launched in 1984 by Amstrad, who who is a British electronics company owned by now Sir Alan Sugar. Back then he was just playing on Alan, who was a self-made millionaire, worked his way up from, you know, like literally a, a market stall to um, electronics giant. And his mission was to basically take over the electronics industry by um, producing stuff cheaply in Asia um, and offering all-in-one convenience um, but through but adding a kind of British style and quality to everything um, and he he most famously did stuff like you know double deck hi-fis which sold in the millions and boom boxes and he, he had amps and he had um, he produced TVs through one of his companies I think it was Grundy that he owned that did TVs but he you name it probably electronics back then he was probably doing something with it and obviously the, the ZX Spectrum caught his eye, which was released in 1982. And he saw um, how much money Sinclair were making with the Spectrum and uh, thought, yeah, I want to have a go at that. And got his engineers working on a computer of their own. And they came up with the Amstrad CPC 464, which was the first model. difference between this and pretty much any other uh, computer out there and uh, we'll have a, a good look at it now I'll have to move these tapes out of the way because they're they're gonna get in the way is that it had had this built-in cassette deck here so the um, no, I'm trying to turn it but the leads from the monitor aren't very long uh, so yeah that was a, a really novel thing for a computer because obviously with the spectrum and the Commodore 64 you had to connect up an external tape deck. Um, but I can't think all the computers, I think this was the first one that had a built-in tape deck. I can't think of any others. I think, mind you, I think Sharp did one that had a, a built-in tape deck. Might have been before the CPC. But anyway, uh, certainly one of the first that people remember. And that was pretty good, because also you didn't have to go out and buy a tape deck separately. It even has a tape counter and uh, everything. That tape counter looks like it's bust. It is bust. It doesn't seem to work. Ha, huh, didn't notice that. Um... But yes, and then they did another model called the 664, which had a built-in disk drive, which was quickly replaced by the CPC 6128, which also had a disk drive, um, but looked slightly different. And uh, and the sp best thing about the, the C128 was had 128K of memory as opposed to 64, like the 464, which is obviously what that, that stands for. And... Um, that gave extra features. So, for example, on, on some games, they would load in one go rather than being multi-loads. You would have uh, speech or music in game or something like that. A bit like with the Spectrum 1 to 8 games, actually, where they would quite often have extra features when played on 1 to 8 okay, machines. And one of the very distinctive things about the CPC as well was the coloured keys. And uh, in fact, it had a big, proper um, PC-like keyboard as well because I know the Commodore 64 did, but obviously the Spectrum didn't. And that was, that was the... It was aimed squarely at that market. It was trying to tempt away uh, Spectrum fans. But Amstrad did very much promote it as a, as a computer that could do everything, not just games. They promoted its um, ability to you know, use word processors and stuff like that because it, it was quite well suited to that. It had a lot of different graphics modes from a, you know, a full colour mode, I think, which can display some, I think it's 27 colours. I might be wrong, um, but something like that, right down to a sort of you know, two-colour monochrome mode. Um, you know, 80 column display and all that for, for word processing. So it, it did do the full range of functions um, as a computer. So, you know, they wanted people to take it seriously, although they weren't ashamed to also promote it as a machine to play games on. So as I said, 64K of memory based on a Z80 CPU, exactly the same as the Spectrum, but with its own custom graphics chips. And it has uh, an AY sound chip, um, which is pretty similar to the one in the Spectrum 1 to 8, it's not dissimilar. Obviously, that was used in a lot of computers. So there are there are some, some similarities with the Spectrum there. 
and that actually ended up directly influencing a lot of the games uh, the Amstrad got, unfortunately, because that because it had a, a smaller user base than the Spectrum and Commodore sixty four, a lot of um, the games publishers back then simply just ported the Spectrum over to the Amstrad CPC without any real improvements, and they quite often turned out quite badly because they would quite often run slower and they would be quite unoptimized for the the hardware which was a shame because the cpc unfortunately had a graphics mode which almost identically matched the spectrum graphics um only in four colors so and because spectrum games were in monochrome a lot of the time to avoid the color clash it was really easy to port those monochrome games over to the cpc the same resolution and stuff like that um, without doing a lot because you had the z80 cpu and the and the um the the ay sound chip so if you knock on the camera there but I have one of my cats attacking something behind me, and you know how much my cats love getting in on my videos, so that one of them might make an appearance, you never know. Uh, so, my other games here, I've got all sorts of things, but this was another favourite of mine, I saw it there, I must mention it. Oh Mummy, because I love this on the Spectrum. Um, the Amstrad version was even better, so I loved it on the Amstrad too. And uh, I love this game so much, I actually wrote a making of uh, Oh Mummy, in Retro Gamer magazine a couple of years ago, I managed to find the original programmer who created it and, yeah, did a lovely making of it. The only, the only shame was that I only got given two pages for it uh, when I could have written so much more. So it's something I would like to come back to. Perhaps not in Retro Gamer, it's something I'll do elsewhere. Um, yes, I review this game and lots of other wonderful games in my um, Amstrad CPC digital books I've done. I've done two of them now. So, um, again, a cheap plug there for my own books. I recommend you go and check them out. Uh, I've got the two digital books at the moment, but there is going to be a print book in the future. So look out for my Amstrad CPC print book. I'm sure I'll be promoting it on this channel because I've had a lot of demand for it. So it's actually moved qu up quite high on my list of ones that I want to get done now um, in print form. <laughs> So what I thought it would actually be pretty cool to do uh, in a moment is we're actually going to see if we can get the um, a game loading because as I say I haven't tried it out yet. So in a moment we will try to load Oh Mummy. But just before I do that actually I should show you um, some more around the computer itself because uh, that's something I usually do. So I want to show you what we've got on the back and stuff like that. So I wonder if I can do it without unplugging it. I'm probably going to have to unplug it. So let's do that. Unfortunately, so what we got on the back of the computer, user port I/O. Um, basically, that's a joystick port. Printer, um, pretty, and then a floppy disk um, interface there, so we can we can uh, connect up a floppy disk drive, so we can essentially load disk games. Although obviously it has only got 64k, so you won't get the 128k improvements, but there we go. If they have a neat monitor, obviously where we plug the monitor to, and power supply where we plug the power supply to. And I want to mention something about that in a moment, actually, it's quite interesting. And there's a speaker on the back there behind the cassette player as well. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. So on this side, what do we have? Volume for the speaker. And there's actually a power on off switch as well. Uh, there we go. On the other side, there is absolutely nothing, and there's not a lot to tell you about at the bottom either. Just a, a uh, you know, sticker telling you the serial number and stuff like that. On the monitor itself, you can see there, without me moving it, that um, there is a brightness, a contrast, a vertical hold, a power on/off, and you'll see there the the um, twelve volt DC that goes from 
And it doesn't go for the computer. This is the one for the computer here, sorry. And that's the one for the monitor. So I'm not sure why we've actually got another power socket there. How strange, because the power lead actually comes out the back. Um, I'm sure someone in the comments will be able to tell me why that's there. I can't see a reason why that's there. How strange. Unless perhaps it's to power a disk drive off or something like that if you're connecting up peripherals to it. Good point, it probably is. Because another one of the unique things about the Amstrad CPC is, as you've probably already seen, is you power it off the monitor. You do not have to plug the computer in separately, which is great because it means you only need to plug in one thing. Whereas if you had a Spectrum or whatever, you would have to plug in the... Um, the you know the the monitor or your tv in that case or monitor the computer you'd have to plug in the cassette recorder <laughs> separately and anything else you might be using so if you example you had a printer using it with all of it you'd have to put that in as well uh i can't do much about the screen flicker i'm afraid because that's just uh because we don't see that to the human eye but the camera picks it up because of the uh the frame rates of the camera and the monitor not matching so let's have a look then. Let's stick a cassette in. Let's see if we can do this. <coughs> let's see if it actually works. So side two. To load, press control and small enter keys simultaneously. I do believe you can type it in as well. But um, control and enter, we'll try that in a moment. So we press control, enter. which is not doing anything. So you can type run with a speech mark, which I believe will work as well. So let's see, moment of truth to see if this actually works or not. Not doing a lot at the moment. Anticipation is killing me. I don't believe it's working. Because it's not saying doing anything on the screen. Oh, it is loading. My mistake, I could hear it coming out the speaker. I don't know if you can hear this noise. Let's see if I can move the camera closer so you can hear it. Look at that, still plays, still works. What does that say about this technology, that that tape player still works? You could hear the, the sort of high-pitched screeching noise it makes while it loads, while the data is going to the system. A bit like you get with the Spectrum. Although it's not quite as offensive as the Spectrum because with the Spectrum you had it, well, depends if you had the, the early model or the later model, but it, would, um, it was really screechy. Read error A, oh dear. So we've got, that one has not worked and Unfortunately, <laughs> it's eaten the cassette. Oh dear. Uh, so let's try and get that out and we'll try again back in a moment. Okay, so that experiment uh, didn't work at all. Any and all attempts to uh, get a cassette game to load have um, ended in abject horror as it's tried to chew up the cassette. I'm guessing that we need a new drive belt in there. So that will be something on my list that I need to do but it was a it was a worthy experiment to see after all these years if it would do that um, I'm thinking of these new drive belts so though it's playing it's uh, trying to do a rewind or something like that it doesn't work at all and old school technique here to get the uh, to spool the cassettes back in I used a pen and turned it by hand kids nowadays do not know the struggle of reeling in tapes with a pen or pencil after they've been chewed up by a cassette player. So there's a couple, but I'm I'm quite distraught that it's possibly ruined my Oh Mummy cassette, which now might not play. But I'm guessing the game's pretty common, so I'm sure I won't have another problem finding one. But actually, I'm gonna stick a clip of Oh Mummy in, because I want, I want you to see how amazing Oh Mummy is. Uh, I've stuck other gameplay clips in through this video, but let's have a little look at Oh Mummy right now, because I love it.
Yes, so that was Oh Mummy, one of the packing games, probably my favourite packing game from the Amstrad. Everyone also says Harrier Attack, which I have somewhere here as well. Um, and I think I've got Roland in the Caves as well, which a lot of people seem to like, but Harrier Attack seems to be um, the favourite of a lot of people. But I love Oh Mummy, so that's my favourite. So uh, let's, let's, let's get a bit of a summary. So the old Amstrad CPC then, is it worth grabbing? Um, yeah, it... it if you're into 8-bit computers, then this is probably one of the ones you should own. A lot of people say they talk about the holy trinity of 8-bit computers here in the UK, which are the Spectrum, Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC, because those were the three most popular 8-bit computers in the UK. The CPC was the third um, in terms of popularity, but uh, it was amazingly successful, the CPC, in France, where... It took over from like the Oric as the, as the most popular 8-bit computer. It is also quite popular in Spain and did fairly well in Germany too, where it was sold by a company called Schneider. So they released the Schneider CPC. Um, but yeah, especially in France. So you'll find a lot of the best games actually on the Amstrad. Um, the most impressive games from a technical perspective come from France. I mean, for example, there's an absolutely uh, incredible looking port of Defender of the Crown uh, from France that I that I discovered recently and reviewed in one of my books and I was stunned by by how great that looked um, on the CPC so yeah there's there's loads there to to work through I mean it's a very different computer to the the Commodore 64 and Spectrum as well and that's one reason one thing I love about these old 8-bit computers is they were all so different I mean the Atari 8-bit is different to the MSX is different to the Commodore 64 is different to the Amstrad, is different to the Dragon 32. You know, it could go on. They all had their own quirks and their own things that they did better. And one, the thing that the Amstrad certainly did better than its rivals was was colour. It had, um, you know, uh, a pretty big... It wasn't so much the big colour palette because other computers had it beat there. For example, the Atari, it bit had like 256 colours. But it, it could display all its colours on screen. So you could have hyper-colourful games with like, you know, near enough 30 colours on screen, which looked fantastic. They were okay, they were a little bit blocky. But when an Amstrad CPC game was done right, something like Chase HQ, it looked way better than the um, than its rivals. And uh, Grizor is another good example. A lot of these games are going to be showing in this video anyway. There's loads out there to investigate on the CPC. And loads of good stuff. And also, you know, for the modern day user, if you don't want to um, go through the, the trials and tribulations of cassettes like I've just done and watch them get chewed up, there are plenty of, you know, flash devices that you can get now for the CPC to load games off that rather than going through the rigmarole of tape or disc. But uh, while the green screen monitor um, is kind of cool uh, because it's, it's the version my friend had, you do get everything in shades of green, which is not so great for some games. You know, Rainbow Islands doesn't look quite so amazing when there's no rainbow. There's just different shades of green. So if you can get a colour monitor, then I do recommend trying to get one with a colour monitor. But you can actually get adapters for the old CPC as well, so it can be used with a television. But I think for the authentic experience, you need to have an Amstrad monitor. Um, that's how it should be, and that's how it works best. Because obviously you get all the hookups as well with the power supply and stuff like that. Uh, so you don't need to faff around with all that nonsense. But anyway, that's my look at the Amstrad CPC, a computer that, that everyone really should have in their collection. It's, uh, you know, a, a very important system in, you know, in the history of computing and uh, one that changed the landscape in many ways because obviously the then Amstrad later bought Sinclair and they modelled the later Sinclair models on the CPC 464 with the built cassette recorders and proper keyboards and stuff. So, yeah, definitely something you should own. I hope you enjoyed my look at the Amstrad CPC 464 and uh, I'll see you all for another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.